Hi everybody! Today we have something very important to share with you before the episode of Sit and Knit for a Bit starts because as you know we pre-record those episodes and when we did today's episode things were a little bit different in Europe. Yeah, since we recorded our latest Sit and Bit for a Lit Sit and knit for a bit. Since we recorded our latest sit and knit for a bit, unfortunately, uh, the situation in Europe has changed and Russia invaded Ukraine. And uh, we just wanted to send out a message of support to the Ukrainian people um, to uh, let you know that uh, our heart bleeds for Ukraine. Uh, you are all on our minds and we think about you and we pray for you and we admire your bravery and your courage and we hope that things will turn out okay for you in this terrible situation that you're in. And as you might know, we have done some designs for Save the Children or Red Barna in Norway. And we did these patterns for grown-ups and for kids. We have hats and mittens. And you can purchase the pattern on our website at arnecarlos.com. And this year we have decided to donate all the money of the sales of the patterns directly to Save the Children. Yeah, we started our collaboration with Red Barna, which is the um, Norwegian branch of Save the Children. We started working with them in 2018. Um, and every year since 2018, we have sent 12% of the proceeds to them so that we can support the very important work they do for children all over the world. This year, we are sending 100% of the proceeds uh, to Red Barna, Save the Children, so that they may be able to help children in need uh, during this terrible situation in Ukraine. Yeah. Um, so... When you purchase, yeah. yeah, when you purchase this pattern, <laughs> uh, yeah, it is very difficult. But when you purchase the patterns uh, that we have designed uh, for Red Barna, and you knit a sweater like this, or one for your kid, or you do a, a hat or a pair of mittens, uh, you can do so knowing that uh, your support uh, has been sent to Ukraine, where it is uh, very much needed. Mm. And for that, we want to thank you. We also want to thank you for uh, your continued love, support and dedication to Arne and myself. But uh, we hope that you can steer a little bit of that love and support uh, towards Ukraine and Ukrainian uh, people. Uh, please support uh, Ukrainian knitting designers by buying their patterns. And if you're able to support other serious organizations that can send help to Ukraine, we would appreciate it very much. It would mean a lot to us. Yeah, so. so hashtag knit for Ukraine, that is what we have uh, used yeah. as a tag so that when you go to our website and arnecarlos.com uh, if you go to purchase the patterns they are the ones marked with uh, hashtag knit for ukraine and all the proceeds are going to save the children so thank you for supporting save the children and we hope you enjoy today's podcast yeah Hi everyone and welcome to Sit in It for a Bit with Arne and Carlos and we are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos and we can hardly see out the window today can we? No, suddenly it's like all the fog came and it's like like uh, a garrot. Yeah, like porridge. Porridge. Yeah, it's very it foggy today. We haven't had a lot of snow this winter but suddenly it's changed but it's very wet. It is, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I can still walk on the road. I went with Helmer this morning mm. and I can still walk yeah. on the road into the woods. Mm -hmm. So it's not that much. No. But it's wet. Yeah. So and it's probably a little go away. Yeah. Again. It's a little depressing as well to look out the window uh, when it's as gray as foggy as this. But no, it gives... it's not. No? No, well, it's nice. I like the candles. Yeah, maybe. I think that <laughs> it's a great boring day, which gives us a great excuse to come in and sit in it for a bit with you guys. Yeah or crochet or embroidery or woodwork whatever it is you're doing you don't necessarily have to sit in it but you know that already we don't do anything we just yeah exactly talk. we just talk and we've got a lot of <laughs> lovely people that we know they keep commenting they don't knit or they don't do this or they don't do that but they still love watching so thank you so much for watching uh and uh thank you for your support yeah. but yeah sit in it for a bit is back for uh now and uh, for whenever we can um and yeah it's been fun hasn't it it's been Fun last days. Yeah. We've got a lot of news. There are so much happening around here. 
It's never boring. No. And the good thing, you the know, hi- the highlight. Yeah. So when we started, when we started our podcast, which we did during the pandemic, I mean, the highlight of our day was when we were hiding behind the bushes, waiting for the mailman to bring us mail. And we were hiding behind the bushes because at that time we weren't supposed to have contact with anyone. That. Remember? Yeah, I forgot about it. Yeah. So the highlight of our day would have been when, uh, when the mailman uh, came and we were hiding behind the bushes. Then uh, we had a lot of moose around. So we yeah. were hiding behind the bush- bushes yeah. to watch the moose. Yes. Then we had the official bird counting weekend. So we hid up behind the bushes for that. And we failed big time. Yeah. So, there, so there's it. been a lot of hiding behind the bushes in the past. But now... We're out and we're, about. We're out and about. <laughs> so yeah, there's definitely a lot yeah, of news. I we've been know. out seeing people. Yeah, so do you want to start with the big news or should we do other news first? Depends on what you think is big because I think we have a lot of big news this this time. Okay. Well, you start. Let me see if I think... So big. the biggest news, I mean, in general is, I mean, by the time you see this podcast, because it is pre-recorded, but the big news right now as we're sitting here is that Norway removed uh, all of its restrictions um, a while so ago. So that's the big news for you. Yeah, that's, okay. well, it's not a big news. It's not big news it's for big me. Thing. I think it's a big thing for everybody. For everybody. Norway. So one, you know, from one minute to the other, everybody was wearing a face mask. And then the next minute, nobody was wearing a face mask. And uh, They've actually done this before. They did this in October. It didn't go so well. No, but now they think it yeah. will go really well. Yeah. So we, we, and we and in October we were watching it on TV, but this time we were actually present yeah. when they removed, uh, well, when we all removed our masks. Yeah, so Norway now considers COVID not to be a threatening uh, disease anymore. But it was very strange the day they opened when they said <clears throat> like, yeah. that you can remove the mask. You don't have to have that one meter distance. Mm-hmm. Should we tell people about where we were yeah. the day they removed the mask. We were, That's a song yeah. or a book. Yeah, the, yeah. where we were the day we removed our masks. Let's write a book. Or make, maybe we could write a song. Or a song. Yeah. And so you anyway, sing it. Yeah, we were, okay. um, we were at the Munch Museum. <laughs> oh, you're singing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were at the Munch Museum. Norway has, uh, you know, in the middle of the pandemic, Norway still manages to open this ginormous uh, museum, all dedicated to one artist and not only, you know, like, any artist, but the, one of the greatest artists ever to live and exist. Yeah. Edvard Munch has so, now his own museum in Oslo. It opened in October, um, actually, when we were in Iceland. Yeah, because we we really wanted to go there. Yeah, to the because opening. Because the first exhibition was with Munch and Tracy Emming yeah. from England. And it sounds like a very interesting exhibition mm. but then we went to iceland to meet yeah. some friends and we had a really good time in iceland yeah and then we came back and then we were like really busy so we kind of said okay we didn't make it to the opening the grand opening of the whole museum so let's go in november but then november came and so did omicron yeah and then we were going to go on our trip right to the us we didn't want to get covid so we kind of just isolated at home and we had a lot to do with christmas also yeah and then after we came back from california We've been super busy, but with the intention to go. And finally, we had the opportunity to uh, do a little cultural weekend in Oslo. And we ended up going to the opera as well. So we went to the opera and to the Munch Museum. So we've been out. Yeah. And while we were in the Munch Museum, they removed all restrictions and we could take off our masks. Um, and now, and, and actually, the Minister of Health said we could even give hugs now. So. There was so no, we hugged everybody. No, we did not hug everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm still, well, I'm still taking care. I it's mean, still a bit strange to him to shake hands. Yeah, I'm not. You're not sure if you should no. do it anymore or if you could. And um, it's very strange. Yeah, after we left the Munch Museum, uh, we were walking uh, up the street with our friends, and then we met some people that we know, but who are friends of our friends. But we knew them, and our friend, I don't know why, she decided to introduce us, and she. And she just, this lady just, you know, uh, put her hand out and said, well, we can, we can do handshakes now. And um, I was a bit hesitant to shake her hand. I didn't take my mittens off. I know, but I, yeah, I I did. I didn't. I don't know why. That's not very polite. I was not polite. But she had those fingerless mittens. So we were both covered up in knitted. Yeah. And this happened after they lifted the restrictions and you're still hesitant. I think we're going to be pretty careful now and uh, 
I mean, we've, we spoke with our doctor. If we, if we get infected, we probably wouldn't get sick from it because of uh, the vaccines that we've had and mm-hmm. also because we actually have natural antibodies. I don't know how, how long they last after you had it, but apparently once you have them in your body, they, they recognize it. So if we get it, we should be fine. I still don't want to get it again. No. I, once was enough. But it was nice to get out. It's great to get out. And it was so, wonderful to see uh, the Munch Museum. Now, the old Munch Museum was built in the 60s. And when Edward Munch died, he gave the entire uh, collection that he had to the city of Oslo. There's over, over 1,200 uh, works of art. And a lot of pieces we haven't seen before because yeah. they've been in the archives. Yeah, because the Munch Museum is was very tiny. Yeah. It was like one story and really small. And apparently they had most of the, the works stored in the cellars mm-hmm. and basement, which is humid. Yeah. So uh, at least now it's, it's uh, gotten it a new home, which is wonderful. The museum is probably the same size as the Pompidou in, in Paris. It's big for one it's artist. Huge. So it's, if you ever go to Oslo, that must be on the yeah. top of your list because this is really, really nice. Yeah. And they also have, like the Munch exhibition is changing because I think they take... Um, well, some floors are uh, some permanent. Floor. Yes, yeah, but even there, they, I think they change some paintings mm. and take things from the archives and switch. Yeah. So. If you go there, like, say you go there every now and then, I think you will have new things all the time. Yeah. And then you have two rooms with um, with not permanent. What's yeah, there are two, um, f- two floors two that have, floors. Uh, have uh, temporary exhibitions of yeah. showcasing different artists. And yeah, all together, all together there's 11, 11 floors and then there's a couple of higher floors with a restaurant and a wonderful view of the city. Mm. Um, and the permanent collection is insane. So, um, yeah, Munch has been a very important uh, artist in our, well, in our culture, obviously, here in Norway, but very influential for us. I think that a lot of our color sense comes from yeah, and if being inspired by his work. Yeah, and if probably knitted our socks with Regia, and the first color combinations we did was inspired of the Munch painting. Yeah, in 2015. 2015. Yeah. So now we see new paintings, more color combinations. Mm, yeah. So yeah. So we got ourselves today. I got ourselves a membership. So uh, we are now officially members, members of the Munch Museum, <laughs> which means that we will basically, whenever we go to Oslo, um, we cut our hair in Oslo, and we also have our dogs groomed in Oslo. It takes three hours to groom the dogs. It doesn't take that long to get us ready. And but, if we have meetings, also, yeah. And if we have to stay over. It's yeah, nice to go to the exactly. Opera or the Munch Museum. Whenever, and whenever we have waiting time, we can go to the Munch yeah. Museum. We always, uh, whenever we have guests from abroad, we take them to the, well, we used to take them to the old Munch Museum. Now we'll be taking them yeah. to the new one. And uh, having a membership there means that we can go whenever we want, as often as we want. And the collection is so big and is so monumental and so important that I, I like the idea of going back and back and back. Uh, over and over again to just focus on a few paintings instead of the whole collection. And it's like if you have one evening or one stay one night in Oslo, it's better to go there and look at stuff than Mm. being in the hotel room and changing TV channels. There's nothing to see anyway. No, that's right. It's like commercial, commercials. Yeah. Commercial. Mm. So in in 2012, the the new Astrup Fairly Museum of Modern Art opened in Oslo. Uh, in 2022, 10 years later, uh, the Munch Museum opened, no, 2021, so nine years later, mm. the Munch Museum opened, we're now officially members, and I have also taken a <laughs> membership today for the new National Museum. Uh, the new National Museum is opening in June, and it is going to be a spectacular place. It's going to be amazing. So Norway is certainly becoming um, a real big contender for a uh, for a very important cultural yeah. capital in Europe, that's yeah, for Oslo, sure. You mean. Oslo, yeah. what did I say? Norway. Oh no, Oslo <laughs> is really becoming a very important yeah. capital of culture now, and uh, it's very exciting to see do all. Have, like when we do our trips, did they have, do they have time time to stay in Oslo this time mm-hmm. for the next trips? Well, now that yeah, now that we're doing our yeah, now that we're doing our knitting cruises, we have uh, talked to our travel agent, yeah. and we are insisting on doing um, a few uh, days in Oslo as well. 
to yeah. see the most important things. To see, uh, well, our favorite things. Our favorite things. Which, would which probably, is important, actually. Yeah. It's the Munch Museum, the opera, and the... the Frogner Park. Park. And, and then, then of course, Holmen Kolmen is quite important, Holmen too, Kolmen. in my opinion. Yeah. And Big Der Folk Museum. And the Folk Museum. Yeah, so we're doing, we're doing this, whole, this whole adventure now with the knitting crews, and there's a program before the, um, the cruise, which is Oslo and Bergen as well, where we also visit the oldest yarn factory in, um, mm. in Norway. So uh, if you've ever wanted to go on this Norway trip, uh, you have a good chance. And it's all hosted by us, I mean, from Norway, and our travel agency is Norwegian. So I think, I think we're quite um, qualified, all of us, to kind of figure out what's the best uh, stuff yeah. around, I think. Because we know it. Yeah. Everything. Well, we, we don't know everything. everything, but we know what we love, and, <laughs> and 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 we, you know, we don't live in Oslo anymore, but we did some uh, twenty odd years ago. It's we, a small country, so if something happens, you get to know it. Yeah, but some so, twenty odd years ago, we had an apartment in Oslo. We actually lived there before we moved here to the countryside. We only live two hours away from Oslo, which means that we can commute. Uh, we can drive in, like we're going to be doing tomorrow, driving with the dogs. We're going to have the dogs groomed. I'm going to get my hair cut. You don't need one, so you, you look great, so Thank you're good, you. and you're welcome. Yeah. And then when we finish doing that, we'll come back, so it's easy, easy peasy. Yeah. But you know, when we lived in, uh, speaking of the Munch Museum, I don't know if we've ever mentioned this, but uh, Arne, tell people where we lived, when we lived in Oslo. It's like five minutes walk from the museum. The old The Munch old Munch Museum. Munch Museum, and... Did we ever go where we lived? No, we talked about it many times. Maybe we should go to the Munch Museum this week, mm. now, and it never happened. Yeah. So it took, actually, the first time we went there was after we left the city. Yeah. But I bet you loads of people that live near the Eiffel Tower in Paris haven't been. Uh, probably. Probably. When things are close, you think, oh, you can do it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. you just say, oh, I can do it anytime. Suddenly we moved out of the Munk, oh, out of the apartment and we hadn't been to the Munk Museum. And it actually took a few more years. It wasn't yeah. until five years after we moved here or something like that. Yeah. We went with our friend who and was from France. Yeah, she came she, because she was seeing she did see the museum when she was young with her parents like many years ago and she said we had to go to the Munch museum because well, she, she wanted to go back yeah, she had some paintings she remembered and she wanted to see them again and she said it was fabulous and and, and we, we we walked in and we were gobsmacked and, and we were so like okay we, we knew Munch we saw them we've seen the pictures in books we've seen the pictures books. in books he's part of our culture yeah. so we know we study him and I guess in school and everything but to walk in and see those paintings in real life, we were absolutely gobsmacked, gobsmacked. Uh, gobsmacked. And it's not necessarily the scream that is the one that gobsmacks so you the most. There's so much other things that is beautiful. Yeah, and, and some are very disturbing as well. Um, you, you walk to them and you, you're, you're seeing these paintings and you know why they would have created such a scandal a um, hundred years ago. Um, and there's some incredible I images like the, the girls on the bridge, the kiss, yeah. uh, the, the summer, the midsummer night with the That's girl beautiful. in the woods yeah. is beautiful. And the vampire, the red, uh, Virginia Creeper. Yeah. yeah. And now, yeah. and now with some new pieces. Yeah. yeah. And the amazing thing now, because of the new museum and all the space they have, they've been able to, to put the paintings together in a whole new way. Yeah. It's just, so you gotta go. Very interesting. And then there was the other exhibition, the other temporary one which was a surrealistic exhibition because yeah. apparently uh, Edward Munch had an issue with his eyes for a few years. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we didn't get the book from that exhibition, but we bought the Dali, yeah, because it was Salvador Dali, yeah. it's a cookbook, the Le Diner de Gala. Yeah, Gala was Le Diner. Le Diner, Le Diner de, Gala. de Gala. Because, yeah, because they, uh, this, this is a temporary exhibit and it's uh, it showcases Edward Munch, but also other artists, like, uh, there were like four or five Dalis. Yeah, and, and I think th those Dali paintings. Amazing. Oh my God. There were a couple of Miro's as well. There were some Max Ernst, uh, yeah. some Magritte. Um, and a beautifully well-made exhibition. Incredibly yeah. well-made. The paintings, they were like so detailed. It's so beautiful. And this, this book is like, it's, it's a cookbook. Yeah. And... It has Dolly paintings and pictures of the food, and it's it is so beautiful. We should do something, Carlos. We should, this. yeah, definitely. Maybe you should do something from this book. Absolutely, I'm going to do something from the book. There's like food or eating related pictures in the book. Very nice. It's beautiful. Yeah.
So this is a uh, this is something we need. To yeah. So anyway, that's a wonderful book called Dali, Le Dîner de Gala. Yeah. The, so uh, uh, I think they were even married to Gala. I think they were married. To I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Published by Tashen. Uh, and then we also got this book. Uh, we didn't manage, unfortunately, to make it to the exhibition, but we got the book uh, anyway. Tracy Emin and uh, Edward Munch. And uh, the title of the ex exhibition was Shalens and Smet, which means the loneliness of the soul in English. And, and people think, thought that Munch was shocking back in the 1800s. Yeah. I think for you, too, this is too shocking. In yeah, 2022. Um, 2020. Yeah, Tracy Ehrman is a, a favorite artist of mine. I really love her work, but uh, it can be shocking, so we're not gonna... It's a lot of naked people and... Yeah, it's not only that. I don't I mean, think that people have died of seeing a naked person. No, I don't think... No, the naked people is not the issue, but it's the shocking uh, way they are... Um, Shown. Shown, or some people might find it shocking. And, but uh, it's, it's a yeah. beautiful book. But yeah, it is uh, very beautiful. So Tracy Emin, one of my favorite artists. Uh, yeah, and then there was a wonderful exhibition at the top floor of the Munch Museum by a really um, amazing new star. She's a very up-and-coming artist. She's a visual artist, video. Yeah, oh, that, that uh, was so Which cool. is just incredible. Yeah. And her name is Sandra Mujinga. So Sandra, uh, Sandra, right? And then Mujinga is spelled M-U-J-I-N-G-A. She's Norwegian. Yeah. Um, and, and those videos, it's like a dark room and you went in and you saw all these moving pic pictures. It's like, what do you call that when you look to when you were a kid? A kaleidoscope. It's kind of a kaleidoscope feeling. Mm -hmm. And we did some videos with our telephones. Oh. It was so cool just to stay there and, and watch these things, all the things happening. Amazing. Around. So she was really good. Yeah. Um, and it was incredible. So a wonderful um, experience for us. Um, we can't wait uh, until next time we go to the museum again. And, you know, because we're, gonna, we're members now, we're going to get invited to all, <laughs> all the, the events. events. Yeah. And, we're, and, and, and then the National Museum will open in June. And we're going to get invited to all those events as well because even we're members. Yeah. And now we're actually planning to go to Oslo uh, and do a video on Oslo, like a video, like a guide. We thought we'd do that because yeah. a lot of people are going to be coming on um, knitting trips with us on our cruise. And, you know, we're including a few days, but there's so much that we want to actually add a few videos of, yeah. you know, some of our, our things, favorite places. Things uh, we like to see. Yeah, a couple of the yarn stores, you know, what you should do in Oslo. Um, what you know, and and how to avoid the tourist traps, because uh, there are quite a few of those as well. Of course, like in, uh, in many places. I think M the Munch Museum will be a tourist trap. No, that's not a tourist trap. You don't think so? Everybody want to go there. Yeah, but that's not a you know a tourist trap is is something that they hype up to be like. Oh yeah, no, that's no, not, no, that's different. The, the uh, Munch Museum is going to be a magnet of people. What is the tourist trap? Tourist trap is like uh, the Arkadeligen. Is that a tourist trap? Yeah. Or the Hard Rock Cafe was uh -huh. like a, probably like a tourist trap. Or they, they're, like Carl Johan. Every, they're like in every city. Yeah, Carl Johan, the main pedestrian street. You know, if you eat in any restaurant on the main walking street, pedestrian street in, uh, in Oslo, that's a tourist yeah. trap. Because you know that those restaurants are very expensive and they're geared towards getting as much money out of every tourist as possible Remember without that? offering good mm -hmm. food. Have you ever had a meal in, in uh, Carl Johan? I don't think so. Why? Because those restaurants are not good. You know, <laughs> everybody knows I don't, that. I really don't remember. I don't yeah. think. But that, that's what a tourist trap means. Oh. I think you mean that Munch is a tourist magnet. Yeah. A magnet, that's yeah. the word. Anyway, it's going to be amazing. Uh, we still did, we also did another pretty fabulous thing uh, this past weekend. In addition to Munch Museum, uh, we took the opportunity now that uh, Norway is opened up and we went to the opera. And now, that was nice. the Norwegian National Opera and Ballet, uh, the opera is probably the most uh, significant opera building to have been built after uh, Sydney Opera House, I think. Um, it cost three billion to build. Uh, yeah, incredible sums of money. And it's kind of like, it looks like an iceberg that kind of jets out of the fjord. Um, it's very, very cool. And uh, the interior of the opera, uh, the, the, the main scene is, is state of the art. Mm -hmm. uh, it has an incredible acoustic, acoustic, yeah. and it's all you know the most modern um, opera house. It was really nice. We we went to see like 
a modern dance. Yeah, we went to see the, the ballet. We went to the ballet. Brahms, the music was br Brahms. Mm -hmm. And the first part and the second part was the modern music. Yeah, well, yeah. Which was also really, really nice. So the ballet, uh, the performance we saw was Mats Ek. And Mats Ek is a uh, very well known uh, Swedish choreographer. But maybe his mother is even more well known than he is. His mother was Birgit Kulbay, mm -hmm. uh, who founded the Kulbay Ballet. She's famous. Um, yeah, she's world famous or was. Yeah. Um, and uh, when she was when she retired, her son Mats Ek took over, and he's created some uh, astoundingly beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw two of them. Uh, we saw one titled. Um, and Brahms, yep. uh, with the music from uh, Johannes Brahms, um, and the other one, um, yeah, something, <laughs> with the music by Henrik Gorecki. Uh, I'm just gonna, I got the booklet here, so um, I'm just putting this so you can see uh, some of the images from the ballet. Um, and I like, like when they dance, and it's like this very modern way of move, of dancing. And yeah. And suddenly it turned into something very classical, like yeah. in, There's elements. in the middle of everything, there was like elements of very classic dance. It was really cool. Yeah, it was very dynamic yeah. and very beautiful, uh, incredibly beautiful. And uh, I don't know how many people can sit at the opera in the, in the, in the was stage it was or in the, in the uh, audience, but I, a couple of thousand, I think. Yeah. And, and we were, it, were, it was packed. Yeah. And it was okay now because they opened up and it was okay to be there. Yeah. So, so moose moose. So if you ever have the opportunity in your town, in your city, or in a city near you, if you have ever the opportunity to see Mats Ek, a Mats Ek ballet, go, uh, and we can guarantee you will not regret it. Uh, if you like ballet. If you like the ballet. So that that was really nice. Yeah. And. There you go. And, 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 and I went to one of the, the second-hand shops, I bought a new suitcase for, the, for my storage thing, and they, were, they had like a pile of vinyl, old yeah. vinyl in, with classic music. And I was thinking, we should go there, mm. you should come with me to that, yeah. that store. And it could be nice to have some of the classic music on yeah. vinyl, because we don't have much of that. No, we have a lot of classical music on CDs. I used yeah, to collect. I don't play them anymore. Yeah, I used to be a big. Uh, I was. I, I when I was younger, I used to be really big on um, classical you music. Nerdy. I was. Yeah, almost, almost, almost kind of like a nerd. I looked yeah. for the perfect recordings of. Uh, we have so everything. Many yeah, and 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 I'm sure we've got a lot of uh, people here who love classical music who are my age, and they're probably wondering what kind of recordings. Uh, the, uh, do I think are the yeah, best? Was, which one? Well, you, um, I, I was a big fan of the Decca brand, D-E-C-C-A. Okay. Uh, the Decca recordings okay. that were done in the uh, in the 60s, 70s, 80s were really good. So they are the best? Um, no, 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 no. They are very good. Also very good. Deutsche Grammophon. Yeah. Deutsche Grammophon had um, or has uh, um, some exquisite uh, recordings. So if I bring home some vinyl, I have to look for those. Well, yeah, no, we have to be, we have to go together. I think we have to come so to now I have a good excuse to go to the thrift shop because I have to guide you. We and, can yeah. listen to it from CDs or from uh, yeah. Spotify, but it's different. It's nicer mm -hmm. to have the vinyl. Yeah, and from in, in terms of opera, all the Decca recordings that were made in the 60s with Pavarotti, John, De, uh, Dame John Sutherland, um, among others, uh, very good. <laughs> Uh, love them. And you love Birgit Nilsson. I love Birgit Nilsson, of course. She is, uh, she was um, one of the greatest opera singers of all time, and she was Swedish. And we play her sometimes from the yeah, Spotify. From Spotify the yeah. It's mm. nice to be in front of the fireplace and glass of wine yeah. and knitting and Birgit Nilsson. And in terms of conductors, uh, so many, but Leonard Bernstein. Uh, George Salty. Um, well, I don't know anyone. Herbert von Karajan? He, no, but know, you, but but you know someone yeah. because uh, there was also um, a brilliant composer called Kurt Masur and you met his his uh, widow, yeah, yeah, Tomoko, she, she, to, Tomoko yeah. Masur. Yeah, hi Tomoko if you see us. Yeah, because Tomoko is an opera singer. Yeah, she came to our knitting cruise. Yeah, the, and she was married. With her sister, and that was so cool. Yeah, with her wonderful sister Coco, yeah. who is also a, really a musician. Good, yeah, yeah, we had a really good time on the boat. Yeah. So, so you were like, what you call that? 
when you're like you see someone, oh. you're like uh, a groupie. Yeah, when I found, <laughs> when, yeah, she, yeah, exactly. When I found out that she was the widow of Kurt Basur, I was starstruck. Yeah, you're so. like, uh, what do you call that? People like would pop up in their animal pictures and stuff. Linz, oh yeah, like a little. Oh, I don't know that name. Yeah, you know the guy that or the person that pops up. <laughs> It, unintentional or intentionally in people's pictures yeah like um photobomb photobomb if they're like a very famous person mm. and you want to be in the picture you just pop up yeah mm. so, yeah yeah you were like that but you also had you said you had a cd somewhere that birgit nielsen signed for you yeah so you were you were different yeah. when you were younger yeah this was i think i must have been 17 uh i think maybe 16 17 and birgit nielsen was in malmo she was actually from Skåne, uh, and I used to live uh, down in the south of Sweden. I studied at the University of Lund in, in the south of Sweden, and uh, and I went to school in Malmö. And one day after school, I went to Enko, mm -hmm. because Enko had, at the time, because this is in the late 80s, at the time, uh, it had the best uh, CD store in, um, <laughs> in Malmö. Yeah. And uh, I walked in, and uh, lo and behold, Birgit Nilsson, came out from behind um, you know they you know they have this little <laughs> stock room probably where they cook where they make coffee and, yeah, yeah. and she came out. and she came out and she sat on a table and there was floating. a yeah floating and there was a long line of people um and i got online and i bought her cd it was called um i think it was called beyond or something like the land of the midnight sun or beyond the land of the and midnight sun. And you know that sun. city calls this somewhere in the storage. Yeah, and, and she should, signed it for me. Yeah, you should take it yeah. in. in the house. And, and you know what, Arne? Yeah, and I was so impressed. And who would have known that this was, say this was in 1987, who would have known that in, uh, you know, 30 years later, I would walk out of that storage room together with you from, you know, a bookstore and we would sit down and we'd do book we signings. Do the same. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know back then when I when, when you were I, seventeen. When I was seventeen, but that, you were listening to opera. Yeah, uh, and classic. But music. I like modern music too. I like everything. I was listening to Amanda Lear, Dolly Parton, Abba, well, Olivia so Newton-John. I like them too. Yeah, so. I never listened to classic. But music I, I, I was doing a lot of crossover from one yeah. one genre to another. So yeah, I guess I guess yeah. But I have to say, your collection of classic music is really impressive. Like when you open those boxes the yes, first time, yeah. it's like, <laughs> don't you have anything else? In yeah, classic unfortunately, music? it's CDs. So yeah, but I took the Boom Boom box back yeah. into my the studio upstairs. We should maybe I should make a box, take all your CDs and just collect them. In a I don't box. know how much I have. It must be like something like five, six hundred CDs. Don't you think? Well, there's a lot. I yeah. think it's a lot. And nowadays, you know, the CDs are no longer uh, in, so it's either. You either go to Spotify or you go to vinyl. Mm. So yeah, maybe we I should build up a, a vinyl collection. But don't you know for that I need to be with you. I think we should have a, a really fun time in the vinyl shop looking for some good records in the in the secondhand shop. Mm. I think we should do do that tomorrow if we have time. Yeah. That could be cool. And I was thinking like I took the, the boom boom box back mm. to the room upstairs and I took some of my CDs, the, not the classical one, but like rock and pop and disco and all these things. And a lot of the CDs, they just, the, they, they jump. Yeah, du, 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 du. yeah, I know. It's and annoying. I remember when the CDs came, they were like so good. You could- Oh, the sound still, was amazing, blah, yeah, blah, blah. You could like have coffee on the CD and it would still work. And, and how a lot long? of the CDs doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And how long did they last? Not very long. Not long. I mean, now nobody, nobody uh, is doing CDs anymore. No. I, I mean, I'm if you buy- I if kept you, my vinyl yeah. records. Usually if you buy new music now, it's either in vinyl or through, you download it, a very few. I think maybe, you know, some musicians, I know Kim, mm -hmm. Kim does have CDs. So yeah. When he does concerts, he sells CDs. But I, he said that he really wanted to do. Yeah, I wish he will have vinyl soon. We well, will. You know what I've done? No. I pre-ordered a new Dolly Parton. Oh album. yeah, coming soon. Coming soon. Coming in March, I think. I don't remember the name of the. Vinyl. And she's published a book as well. A new book. Mm -hmm. oh. No, this is a. I think it's fiction. She co-wrote it with someone. You'll have to go and look. <laughs> <laughs> There's a book from Dolly Parton as well. Okay, I need. Mean, I'm have quite sure of that. Collection. Yeah. As you all know, we have uh, we have a we had a, long, a short term guest here that uh, we call Framer. Uh, well, he is called Framer, and uh, at some point he became um, more than a long term guest. 
Vrije mail? No. Vrije mail. That, that, that's sorry. both of them. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we had a short-term guest called Helmer, Helmer. who and became now... who became a long-term guest who is now pretty more or less permanent. Um, and yeah, and, and we've enjoyed a lot of his company. But now we've actually had a short-term guest. He came and he left well, yeah, very that soon. Was, that was the other. That was kind of Elvis. I thought that was the really the highlight of the week or mm -hmm. the last days. But for you, it was the opera and the monk. But yeah, I think. Elvis, that Elvis actually came, that was <clears throat> one of the, I think it's up there. <coughs> Sorry, it's not COVID, I just <coughs> swallowed the wrong You should way. drink and talk at the same time. Are you okay? <coughs> it's ba not COVID. Ba ba ba. <coughs> <coughs> it's, we're fine. Okay. So oh, Elvis. <coughs> yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. So who's Elvis Arna? He's the electric car. Because we are actually thinking about handing in our old... Uh, no, we're not thinking. We are, we are doing it. The old uh, Mitsubishi uh, diesel car. Because mm -hmm. I think we have to go... We have to try to be greener. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And I think in like in... They say on the radio, like in two or three years or in a few years, they won't sell any new cars. Mm -hmm that runs on diesel or um, gasoline or do you call it? fuel fuel so every, every new car in norway will be electric so i think we have to just go yeah. with the flow so norway yeah electric. and norway is one of the countries in the world that has the most uh, electric vehicles yeah. now i mean tesla is the best selling car in norway and because of this we have so many charging stations no matter where you drive you see charging stations everywhere. When we were driving in California, we hardly saw any. No, we didn't. But or we didn't think about. We it didn't think about had, it because we didn't have an no. electric vehicle. But here, they're everywhere. So we are. We borrowed an electric vehicle for a couple of days, okay. and because El, it's it called electric vehicle in Norwegian is El bil. El E L means electric. So we thought we'd call the car that we have here temporarily for Elvis. Yeah. And we drove him for two days and he was really nice. So we're gonna get ourselves uh, the female counterpart, uh, which we're going to be calling Elfrid. Yeah, so now we have Elfrid. Soon we will have Elfrid, the yeah. electric car, and we have Humlen, mm -hmm. the old beetle, yeah. named after my mother. So we're gonna be green for most of the year. And yeah. then during the summer, we'll drive the vintage beetle so, from 1968 and we won't be very green. Not so green in the summer. But but it's going to compensate the rest of the year, um, and uh, we're now getting the we're getting the offer. Smooth, smooth. Yes, we're getting the offer, and but we're, we are a little bit back and forth on this because we can. There's we have two options: we can buy a car or we can lease a car. Yeah, a car, and we're we're like it's okay to own a car, but if then you can do whatever you yeah. want. But if you lease the car, you have to be very, very careful because you can hand it in after like three years yeah. and get a new car. And that is also good because there are so much happening with electric yeah. cars. So you want to change maybe the car after three years, then you just yeah. you know hand it over and get a new one. Because the so... one we looked at is super quick when you charge, charge it. Yeah. And there's only two cars which are so quick. And this is one, the cheap one of the two. Yeah. And you know, in three years, maybe they can be charged even quicker. Yeah, absolutely. And the, and the range will be longer. Yeah. And people people are probably wondering what car is the one uh, who's Elvis. So Elvis <laughs> is a Hyundai Ioniq 5. Uh, and he's very cool because he's got this very retro kind of design that is at the same time very modern and futuristic. So if you think of that movie um, back to the 80s, the one that was in the 80s, no, Back to the Future, sorry. If the, that movie with Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future, which was done in the 80s, and then there's that car, the DeLorean or something. No, I and remember. anyway, for me, that's kind of like a, we, we're getting a Back to the Future kind of car. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's, it's like cool. going into a computer. It is, yeah. It's, uh, it's like you have everything, like you can even press a button and you get sounds of the of the nature. Oh, yeah, while you charge the car. I thought that was cool. Anyway, who would have thought that <laughs> sitting in it for a bit podcast would turn a, suddenly turn into a car, a car uh, show. show. But that's what we're doing. We're getting an electric car and we are so excited about this. And, uh, and the good thing, 
the bra the the gears. There's no gears. No, the automatic, automatic gear thing. It's not in between the two seats. It's on the steering, steering wheel. wheel, like on the old Renault Four or the old Citroen Two CV. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a little bit old fashioned having that over there. And but then you have a lot of space between yeah. you. So if you drive, I can actually have. My, my knitting baskets or anything between us. Yeah, those chairs, they recline all the way back. There's footstools that come out. It's like business class so in the airplane. Yeah, kind of like a business class seat. And uh, of course, not for driving. This is to relax while the car but charges. Charge the car. But this car charges from zero to 80% in uh, 18, just under 18 minutes. So it's a, it's a, it's, it's a miracle machine yeah. and we're getting it. Um, and it was so. fun, um, and, and the dealer was so nice that he lent us the car for two full days because we drove it everywhere. We went to grocery shopping, we went to Arne's family farm. We tried like a really steep yeah. road because it has only two wheel. Yeah, it's two wheel drive, right. back wheel. So we drove it up a very steep road and then we stopped in the middle of the road up on the way up and then continued just to check. We did that three times. And it worked. And what are you doing? I'm cuddling Freya, and because she's, uh, she wants to get up, and if she comes up, then he, then he yeah. Henry comes, and then she gets so mm. angry, so I, I had to calm her down on the table. I do. But another thing which I, I think is cool with this car is that it has the engine in the back, so it's heavy in the back. Just no, it doesn't have the engine in the back. The wheels no, the are. Wheels, it's, the, it's, it's, it's a rear, rear, rear wheel drive. Yeah, so it's heavy. It's more heavy. And the battery pack is in the down back. on the floor. Yeah, but it's more heavy in the back than yeah. in the front. So it's more like old Beetle. Mm. Yeah. So that's cool. That's something. Let's talk about knitting. Yeah, how about talking about embroidery first? First embroidery. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We've wanted embroidery to become very popular, uh, and maybe now is time. I mean, in Norway, it seems to be like a big thing right now. Yeah, which is great. Which so, we hoped for, and that we actually yeah. thought it should come many years ago, but it's hard. So, and we already wanted embroidery to be big uh, ten years ago when we did our book Nina and Crochet Garden, where we have, among others, these massive pillows, which are done in like big wool, like a very thick wool, and they're super quick to embroider. I mean, one of these wouldn't take very long to no. do. And uh, we've decided to uh, relaunch four of these pillows, which you can get on our web shop now. I hope people will get them. Yeah. This is called a diamond stitch, and it's a lot of fun doing. Yeah. Um, and so we've been working a lot on, on embroidery for a long time, but we haven't released more than this yeah. so far. We have the mandrill pillow that we showed we're, once. We're definitely going to be releasing a pattern for that. We just then have to get it out. And then there's the, a giraffe as well. And a giraffe. And there's more animals coming. Yeah. And then I'm working on the dead or blind woman's embroidery, yeah. which I found in thrift shops. And for those who don't know, um, Arne keeps going to a thrift store and he's buying this woman's uh, unfinished projects. Probably there's different women because... And he's finishing them. I find new stuff all the time. <laughs> but it takes time. And I've been working on the cat, which we have shown before. and. I'm almost finished with the cat pillow now. I just have to fill in the rest of the black and there are some colors missing on the mm. cat, the gray cat and look between the eyes, but it's coming. But I had to had to use some, like just a sheep yarn in black, which is the same thickness as the embroidery yarn to finish it because there were no more black in the thrift shop. Um, I could have ordered yarn, but I'm lazy. Mm. So yeah. So what Arne what Arne did on this one is because when he got it, the cats were already done, and a most bit of it, the green and the flowers, and a little bit of the flowers in the green. But all the romps you've added, and you've actually added them in the grass as well. Yeah, where they were not finished, I put mm. the romps, and I also had to put uh, canvas on top of the other. I found canvas that was the same to make it a square thickness. So I just placed the canvas mm. on top of each other and embroidered through the two layers to make it square because yeah. this was actually supposed to be. I guess it was something like that, and it was supposed to hang on the wall. But mm -hmm. for a pillow, you need that extra. Yeah. So this is going to be a, a pillow on our sofa at some point. Yeah. 
And it's nice, it's it's a modern version of that ugly uh, original embroidery, which I really didn't like. I think No, because was... you don't need that on the wall. No. It's nice to have it in the sofa. Plus, you know, it, it was very conventional with the two cats. This is a, a little bit more edgy and yeah. cool. And then I love the idea of the, of the masking tape. Uh, the masking tape is put around it so that this doesn't shed yeah. the, the canvas. And the first time we saw this was uh, at an exhibition okay. in Taos. We were in Taos in 2019, and there was a big exhibition um, in a little museum there. Yeah. And uh, one of, another one of our favorite um, artists, Judy Chicago, yeah. who is wonderful, uh, she had some uh, textile pieces exhibited there. Yeah, they there. were like these small, it looked like more like embroidery sketches. Mm. And they were... Uh, she had used this masking tape you yeah. use for when you paint your walls or windows and stuff. And I thought that was a really good idea because all these, not on this side, but normally these threads, they go out when you work on them. Because it's more stable like yeah. this. So this is, I think that was a really good yeah. idea. So, then, so now then, I use this magic tape or this yeah. tape on everything. And then when you do the lining, you sew it and then you just remove the masking yeah, tape and, it, it off and, and it's it done. Yeah. And then, and then everything, these, these seams disappear anyway inside. So it's... Uh... But one day I will finish this one and it's, I'm not almost finished and I won't show you a new one before this is finished mm. because I have bought more. Okay. And you haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. So it will be exciting. You have no yeah. clue what I have in my suitcase. Oh, I have no idea. So those are the, oh, that's going to be an episode, by the way, out of the suitcase. We're going to be showing you stuff inside our suitcases uh, this year in our in our YouTube channel on Sunday. So uh, stay tuned for those yeah. episodes. And that's all the suitcases I, I collect when I find these old suitcases I buy. And I think maybe in the summer we can do a sit and knit hmm. and show people how the suitcases look in the storage room. Yeah. Because I think I, it's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. But we need to have warm weather. Yeah. It's too cold now to be out in the storage. Yeah. So anyway, that's the embroidery stuff. Then we've got some knitting stuff. Somebody asked uh, whether the advent calendar sweaters fit the knitted doll and the answer is yes, they, yes do. they do. So here you have our knitted doll. This is Sonia and uh, she's wearing uh, December 1st yeah. without the number on it. Yeah, we just use the pattern for the sleeve on the body and the sleeve because they are the same. It's just that there's no numbers on the sleeve. Mm. So we just, you just knit from the sleeve patterns on the body and the sleeve and then you get the yeah. sweater and it works so if you're wondering now you know uh, you can use the advent calendar pattern and knit sweaters for your dolls you can knit them all 24. Yeah. That would i be think cool. i will do that yeah why not i think i will try them in other yarns as well yeah you see it can also be bigger it can mm -hmm. be like an oversized sweater for the dog yeah. for the doll if you use a bigger thicker yarn mm -hmm. and i found the trouser yeah so very nice um, and then we've been doing a lot of work, design work around the mittens, and uh, we've come up with some interesting I, I, things or some interesting yeah. thoughts that we wanted to share with you guys because uh, lately we've been doing uh, two different sizes on a mitten using just uh, different needles, and that actually works really well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then Arne decided to develop another size, just changing the pattern to get two different and sizes was, on the same needle. And Arne, your yeah, conclusion? Because we used the, our, our yarn with Rowan, the Norwegian mm -hmm. yarn, and that was a waste of time. Yeah. I'm not doing that anymore because people can actually change the needle. It's better, Because yeah. the yarn takes so many different needles. So first we did the Sibern, the redesign of the Sibern mitten, the, re, the old one, this one, with yeah. the, the Vec. And that was that. That was the first mitten we did only in one mm, size yeah. because it was so hard to make this pattern yeah. smaller. It became so ugly because you can, if you remove a whole flower, it's too tight. Yeah. So this is the other size, right? Yeah. And then I, I knitted another mitten on the needle three mm -hmm. from the same pattern, and then you have two different sizes: a bigger one and a smaller one. Mm -hmm. So. Then I we made this one, like more old style mitten that we came up with. And for this one, I actually made a smaller pattern. Yeah. So this this one, both of these are knitted on the needle number three yeah. from a different pattern. So the design is has been changed so that it's been adapted yeah. to the smaller, to become a smaller size. However, and, however, when you see 
See the. I think. The, which one? This one. Yeah. When you see this one and this one, you see this is another pattern and the needle 3.5. This is the same pattern and the needle 3. Yeah. The same pattern as the big one in this dot, and you get the same size. So, no point. So, we decided. For especially for Norwegian yarn, we're not doing more than mm -hmm. one, and then people can change the needles. Yeah, I think people have that knowledge. I don't don't think that is hard. Mm -hmm. If you know how to knit a mitten, you know how to knit, exactly, change yeah. a needle. Mm -hmm. And it was the same for the tiger. For the tiger. <laughs> yeah, because the tiger was this was almost impossible to make smaller mm -hmm. because then the whole design disappears. There's no space for him. So. Smaller needle. Yeah. Definitely. And if you want it even bigger, bigger needle. Mm -hmm. And I know in some places they have needles that is like like 375 and 325 and stuff. In Norway you have only three, three and a half, and four and four and a half. Mm -hmm. But I think I, you can have other sizes. Yeah. And then you can even get other sizes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So based on the needle there are so many sizes in one pattern. Absolutely. And I think that is actually how they made a lot of things in the old days. Mm. And it's time to be a little bit more old fashioned, I think. Yeah. So think, uh, um, uh, update from the update from the pulp costume is that the sewing machine is out, but that's pretty much it. Fabric is still on the table. So but it's on the table, it's out of the yeah. box now. And, and the plan was to do it like two days ago, mm -hmm. and that didn't happen because we had to go to the what you, garage to fix the the window on the car. Yeah. The car of because, our non electric vehicle. Yeah, because we, we drove by a car. Big, Which we're going to sell. Big, uh, do you call that? Like a, a, a stone from stone a truck. Stone from a truck yeah. came and broke the window. So that was, we had to spend one day there. and. Mm -hmm. So, but it's on the table, but I have, table. I have decided now by looking at it, at it that I think we should steam it. It says in the paper you shouldn't yeah. steam the white one, but... We're going to steam it very carefully. I, I think we have to do it, yeah. and I'm also going to break some rules. Yeah, the problem with this thing is you need to start. Once you start, it goes by itself. And actually, when we were after the Munch Museum, we did walk past uh, Husfliden, yeah. uh, Heyman. In, in Oslo, and uh, they had my jacket hanging on the uh, in the window, and and, when I, and I say my jacket is because I the chose white. the white one, Arne has the black one, and it was hanging in the window, and it looked fabulous, but it also looked very easy. So I don't think yeah. you know you're gonna be we're gonna be doing it's it's a back panel, it's a two front panels, there's two sleeves, there's an intermediate lining that yeah. needs to be PK, and then there's a lining. And then there's some piping and a little bit of embroidery. I mean, it's a piece of cake. I think maybe the day after tomorrow. On Wednesday, we on can Wednesday, do it. Yeah. We, we should start. I agree. I hope we can start. And Fingers then crossed. maybe in one or two weeks, we can probably show something. If yeah. Not a lot of other things happen. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I, think, I think we should steam the fabric a little bit before we sew it. And I also think that I'm not going to follow the 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 instruction yeah because it said you have to measure all the pieces and check on your body yeah but my body changed so did yours but i don't think i will do that because it's you so know this confusing. is this is before covid and now we're all this <laughs> this is after covid so <laughs> so we don't know what happened between no. uh you know it's two years two years ago yeah. it's actually it's two years ago since we got this yeah. since we bought this so and we had to fix your folk costume for Christmas. Yeah. We had to take it in. That's the, true. The trouser was mm -hmm. too big for you now. Yeah. So um, other updates, we are uh, so far so good when it comes to sitting in it for a bit. We know that we're going to be taking a break for Easter, uh, but it's still not Easter. But that particular week, Easter week, which is in the middle of April, we're not going to be doing sit in it for a bit because we're going to have a holiday. And uh, But other than that, it looks like we are going to be able to keep our schedule for the time being, which yeah. is great. We do have a few trips planned already. And um, in May, uh, I think we can say this now because we were we were being, being very discreet about it because of, you know, we didn't know if Norway was opening up, but Norway is open. So uh, in May, we're doing our first knitting cruise um, and it's already sold out. We actually sold it out to our waiting list. Uh, it took just two days or something and it was gone. So um, we're we looking forward we to that. We didn't even have the chance to promote it because- It sold out. 
all the people on yeah. the waiting list and also the, the mailing list. Like if you're on the mailing list. Well, no, this went. This didn't go to the mailing no, list. No, this didn't it only go went to the to mailing the, list. The waiting list. So we had a long waiting list. So that's yeah. why. And we still have one, but I mean, if you if you get on the mailing in, in, on, on the waiting list, if you're interested in knitting crews here in Norway, get on the mailing list or the waiting list. Yeah. Get uh, contact us through our email or just go to our website, send us an email, get on the wait list, and then we'll we'll eventually update. We uh, the cruise that we're doing now in May uh, or in May is sold out already. Mm -hmm. um, we're planning one in October. We may plan an Arctic adventure southbound in uh, September. We're yeah. still not. Um, Sure about that, but for sure there's going to be a six day one in October and there's going to be one in March 2023. And we're planning garden tours. Yeah, we've That's got a garden tour that I think uh, should have been announced by now uh, in Italy. Yeah. So it's the Italian uh, gardens. Arne and I have been in Italy uh, for the past 20 years uh, quite often. We love Italy. Uh, we go there a lot for work. You know, all the yarn development, the Italians have the best know how. When it comes to uh, yarn spinning and uh, manufacturing, I mean, I'm talking now about uh, industrial in the industrial way, not not, not the not the uh, little freelance uh, um, companies, but like in an industrial way. So we're there a lot uh, in Italy, and uh, we love their beautiful gardens. So yeah. inspired by that, we're doing a garden. And we love the food. We love the food and as the well. The wine. So and the antiques. Yeah. So if you want to meet us, uh, why not come with us on this garden trip? There's going to be very few people uh, because we're still thinking COVID friendly. Um, so not that many spaces, but uh, could be a nice opportunity to hang out with us. Uh, the trip is both geared towards uh, knitters and gardeners, but mainly gardeners, of course. Um, lots of knitters love gardening. Yeah. We're going to design a project for the bus because we're going to be taking a bus. We're going to Rome. Florence, uh, Verona, and the Italian And if you're lakes. not a knitter, you get, a, get it anyway, yeah, but then you can give it away for Christmas. Yeah, and you're welcome anyway. I mean, yeah. it's not a knitting tour, it's a garden tour. So, you know, check it out. Uh, we've sent out information about this as well uh, through our mailing list. And if you are not on the mailing list... Uh, put you yourself on the mailing list. Put yourself on the mailing list or write to us and let us know you're interested in the Italian garden trip. And yeah, and I don't know, I mean, Europe has been using its restrictions. It seems like more and more countries in Europe are coping well with Omicron. So uh, if all things go well, uh, we if not if it's not the end of the pandemic, we should be seeing a period now in spring and summer yeah. when the virus will be knocked out because so many people have had it, because so many people are vaccinated and because of the weather. And then maybe it'll get back to you know, higher levels of, of infections um, in fall, maybe in November. But I would say until October, we should be okay, yeah, I think. I we'll, think. And then we'll see, so. maybe maybe it is the end of the pandemic, yeah. who knows? So yeah. I wonder what's going on with Faye. Yeah. She's like, in the one, one minute, she want to be on my lap, mm. and the next, she don't want to be here. Yeah. Maybe she has to get out. What's happening with them? I, I think we have been talking too much now. I think it's time to stop because the dogs are actually going bananas. I think they want to go out. They so, need to go and they need to go powder, powder their noses. That's what they are doing. So what about a formality here? Yeah, you can do it. You're so good at it. You're good too. Okay. I'm good. Um, if you like our videos, put your thumbs up and if you are on the if you are subscriber. a subscriber remember to put on your um, notification because then you won't miss the episode and put yourself on the mailing list and if you're not a subscriber become a subscriber because it's a lot of fun and uh, we do uh, podcasts on wednesdays and, and we do it. yeah podcasts sit in it podcasts yeah. on wednesdays and regular tutorials on Sundays. Every Wednesday and every Sunday for Easter, we're gonna be taking a one week break with Sit In It for a bit. Otherwise, we do aim to do it uh, as much as we can every Wednesday until the summer. So uh, stay tuned, there's lots more to come uh, this spring. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.